Normally, the kramers kronig dispersion relationships involve integrals going from minus infinity to plus infinity. The question here is, can you rewrite these integrals as integrals going from zero to plus infinity, provided you're dealing with susceptibility, which in the time domain is real valued? So pause the video and think about how you would tackle this. So in terms of general strategy, we want to go from an integral over frequencies which are both positive and negative, so omega going from minus to plus infinity, to an integral involving only positive functions. So it makes sense to try and split up our original integral into a separate integral for negative frequencies and a different integral for positive frequencies, and then try to somehow use the fact that some of the functions are even or odd to turn that into a single integral going only over positive frequencies. So try and make use of the fact that chi of t is real valued to draw some conclusions about the even or odd nature of the real or imaginary component of chi of omega. So in case this was the hint that you were missing, now would be a good time to pause the video and try again. So we need to look at the frequency transform, the Fourier transform of our susceptibility. So chi of omega can actually be written as an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of chi of t, which we know is a real valued function because of physical reasons, and then multiplied by exponential minus j omega t dt. So this is the definition of our Fourier transform. By the way, the nice thing about Fourier transforms is that there are lots of different definitions. So you can have a plus sign over here, you can have extra factors of 2 pi here, you can have extra factors of 2 pi there in front of the integral. So all of that is just a matter of convention. But the important thing is that we have a relationship that looks roughly like, like this. What we're now going to do is investigate what happens for negative frequencies. So let's see what happens when we replace omega by minus omega. Then we have an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, chi of t exponential plus j omega t dt. The important thing here is that this quantity is real valued. So this means that this chi of minus omega is actually what we had up here, but just taking the complex conjugate. So this means that chi of minus omega is the complex conjugate of chi of omega. And that's very interesting because now we can see what happens if we split up uh, the susceptibility into real and imaginary parts. And as sort of like a writing shortcut, I will use u and v as the real and imaginary part of the susceptibility, uh, respectively. So first of all, chi of minus omega, we can write that as u of minus omega plus j v of minus omega. And then for the right hand side, we have the complex conjugate of chi of omega. So that's going to be u of omega. And then because of the complex conjugate, minus j v of omega. So now we can just identify the real and the imaginary components of that expression and conclude that u of minus omega is equal to u of omega. So this is an even function. And then for the imaginary part, v of minus omega, on the other hand, is minus v of omega. So that's an odd function. So next step, now that we know this, can you use that information to reconfigure the integral such that we only have an integral over positive frequencies? Let's have a look at our original integral. Let's start with an integral for uh, u, for the real part. So u of omega is equal to minus pi, the principal value, 
integral from minus infinity to uh, plus infinity of v omega prime omega prime minus omega d omega prime so that's the starting point and we're going to split that up into two different contributions so first of all that's a contribution for only negative frequencies so minus omega to zero v omega prime omega prime minus omega d omega prime and then another contribution for positive frequencies so that's zero infinity v omega prime omega prime minus omega d omega prime now we're going to transform the first integral so that it looks like the second integral more specifically with respect to the integration bounds so for that we're going to make a substitution where we replace omega prime by minus omega prime so that's going to become one over pi the principal value of plus infinity to zero v of minus omega prime minus omega prime minus omega minus d omega prime so that's just just a substitution of omega prime uh, with minus omega prime and then the second term that just uh, is the same so let's work this thing out a little bit so the important part here is that we know what uh, the parity of v is so if we look up there v is an odd function so this will give us an extra minus sign and we can use that minus sign to flip the sign of the denominator here the minus sign of this guy we will use to flip the order of the integration bound so this will be an integral from zero to infinity of v of omega prime d omega prime and then we have omega prime plus omega plus one principal value integral zero infinity v omega prime d omega prime omega prime minus omega and now we're basically done we just need to combine these two integrals into a single integral <clears throat> so that's going to become an integral one over pi principal value zero to infinity v of omega prime and then we have one over omega prime plus omega plus uh, one over omega prime minus omega d omega prime just bringing stuff here on the same on the common uh, denominator that's going to be omega prime minus omega plus omega prime plus omega divided by omega prime squared minus omega squared and now good news this thing cancels so finally we can write that this is equal to 2 over pi because of these uh, two omega primes here 2 over pi principal value integral from 0 to infinity v omega prime let's try and uh, I have some more space here so v uh, omega prime and then an omega prime d omega prime divided by omega prime squared minus omega squared so that's the result for u obviously you can do something very similar for v so if you haven't done so pause the video and follow a similar line of reasoning for the imaginary component okay let's just repeat exactly the same thing but now for v so we know that v of omega is minus one over pi in this case principal value integral minus infinity to plus infinity of u omega prime um, omega prime minus omega d omega prime 
So again, splitting this up into two components, minus one over pi principal value minus infinity to zero u omega prime d omega prime omega prime minus omega minus one over pi principal value integral from zero to infinity and then just copy and paste u omega prime d omega prime my omegas look a bit funny omega prime divided by omega prime minus omega so again replacing omega prime with minus omega prime minus one over pi principal value integral this becomes plus infinity and zero u of minus omega prime minus d omega prime and then we divide by minus omega prime minus omega and then the same thing for the second term that just stays uh, stays the same now in this case again let's use this minus sign to flip the order here uh, but since u in this case is not an um, odd function but rather an even function there's no minus sign to compensate for the minus signs in the denominator so these just stay and we have minus 1 over pi principal value integral from 0 to infinity u of omega prime and then for the first term we have minus 1 over omega prime plus um, omega and then for the second term we have 1 over omega prime minus omega so that's just the same thing that we have here and that i was too lazy to copy there okay d omega prime again same thing bringing this onto a common denominator that becomes minus omega prime plus omega plus omega prime plus omega divided by omega prime squared minus omega squared so in this case what cancels is omega prime and then we can write finally that this becomes and again let's have some extra room here minus 2 over pi principal value 0 to infinity u of omega prime times omega d omega prime and then we have the same denominator omega prime squared minus omega squared so this is how you reformulate the kramers kronig dispersion relationships in case you're dealing with real valued temporal signals to an integral involving only positive frequencies.